Good morning guys and girls. Welcome back to my channel and my garage. Uh, today we're going to do an unboxing of a Bosch uh, Colt 1 horsepower trim router. Uh, model number is PR20EVSK. The reason I bought it, uh, if any of you all have watched my channel before, you know I'm a big fan of this little Harbor Freight trim router. And I've had it for about two years and it's been a good router. The problem I have with it is this plastic piece on here. Uh, when you move it in and out, it's not very accurate. And unless you really torque down or put something in between right here, uh, I have a hard time keeping it still, especially when I'm uh, doing real fine work, which is uh, my next project is what I'm going to be doing. Uh, I decided this router probably is not going to be adequate uh, for the type of uh, trim that I want to do. Uh, <clears throat> this isn't. This is uh, my next project, which is a set of nightstands for an antique uh, bed that my wife has. It belonged to her grandmother. Comes from the Depression era. Uh, it is the bed and the mirror and dresser, but it has no nightstands with it. So we want to copy the same style and look of the dresser uh, and make nightstands. Uh, so I started with uh, trying to figure out how I'm going to cut the grooves in the front. As you can see in the pictures, it's got a, a small groove that goes around the whole front of the uh, dresser. And that also has, uh, looks like, three eighths inch doubles cut in half that go across. Uh, I haven't exactly figured out how I'm going to do that yet. Uh, that's going to be a challenge. And, of course, it will be videotaped as a project uh, as I go. But I did uh, start uh, working on the front. Uh, these pieces fit like this, and then there's another piece that goes down and goes across like that, as you can see in the pictures. But all of this front has a groove in it. Uh, I have a router table, and I also have a router insert in my table saw. And I thought about doing it on that. Uh, but the problem is, is I can't get this down on the table. And this curve, I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to cut the groove in this curve yet. Uh, so I decided I would just go ahead and buy a better trim router that had more precision uh, depth to it, uh, to where it had, had like a micro adjustment. I did some research online and found that this Bosch Colt, one horsepower, uh, had really good reviews. Uh, I bought it from Lowe's. I paid uh, one, well, I think it was like 116 plus tax. Uh, and don't get me wrong, that Harbor Freight router for $29, you know, you can't beat the price. It's been a good router. I really can't complain about it except that it's just not very accurate. Uh, it's good for cutting dados, it's good for cutting uh, like grooves and wooden stuff like that. Things that you can't put on a regular uh, router table. It, it, it did fine, but I needed something that was more accurate and uh, had a better edge guide and stuff on it. So this is what I bought. So today we're going to do an unboxing and take a look on it, at it on the inside. I haven't opened it yet. I thought we would do this together. If you're thinking about buying this router, uh, we'll take a look and see what's all included. Then I'll shut the cameras off and actually read the in instructions on how to use it. And then we'll come back and I'll demo it. And uh, you can see it working in action. So that's the plan. Okay, get these 
tabs out of here. Comes in a nice plastic case, which I liked. The Harbor Freight Rubber doesn't come in any kind of case. I don't think there's anything left left in this box. Now, box is in. So everything is right here in the case. Got a real nice, real nice latching system on the case. cameras so I'll do my best. Okay. Got a funny thing here on the cord. It says do not remove. I'm not sure exactly what it's for. I guess when I read the instructions I'll let you know what that little piece right there is for. <laughs> and here's the router. Actually, this one just maybe just a tad bit heavier, but that's probably because of pla not plastic, this is aluminum, which I uh, like a lot better. The foot is a little bit bigger on it compared to the Harbor Freight. The foot is probably about three inch bigger. I don't know if you can see that on the cameras or not, but it did the the. Uh, Base is just a tad bit bigger than what's on the Harbor Freight router. It also has micro adjustment. I'm assuming this is uh, where you would put the uh, edge guide. Uh, it's got a real nice uh, grip for one hand. Uh, so you can grab, kind of grab hold of it. It's kind of curved here, which I like. The Harbor Freight router doesn't have anything like that. I mean, you just kind of grab it where you can. The one thing I do, did like about this Harbor Freight router is that this was open, so you could see what you were doing. On this one, it's open a little bit, but I don't think the uh, viewing of it is going to be uh, as good as what it was on this uh, transparent uh, base. It was easier to see things when I was using it. Uh, but I don't know, we'll have to, we'll have to find out when I start using it. Uh, it. It is a whole lot built better. Of course, it's going to be, when you pay $29 for a router, or you pay $118 you know, or whatever I did for it, uh, this better be a better well-made router. So, uh, also on the Harbor Freight router, it had two wrenches. You had to put two wrenches in here and it was kind of awkward uh, to change out the bit. You had to put one wrench on the bottom for the shaft and then another wrench for the nut, uh, call it nut, to loosen it. On the Bosch, it has a button right here where you can push in and it locks, locks the shaft in place. You only need one wrench. That uh, to change the bits, which I think I like a lot better. The foot is a lot more sturdy. This is this is the foot of the Bosch. This is the foot of the uh, Harbor Freight router. And while this one is probably adequate, uh, never could uh, get it to stay tight. Had a hard time keeping it square. This one here seems to fit a lot better. It's heavier. It has a uh, marking gauge on it, which I like. And you can actually move it in where you need it. Uh, looks like a better, looks like a lot better uh, edge guide. And of course, you got the manual for it and the wrench. It's got two wrenches. Uh, I guess one is to change off the collet itself and the other one is just to uh, change off the bit. We're going to shut this off and uh, I'm going to read through the instructions and then uh, I'll turn the cameras back on and uh, we'll demo it and see how we like it or not. All right. Alrighty, I read the directions.
directions and got familiar with it and I'm going to show a few features on it uh, and we'll compare it to, again to the Harbor Freight Router. Uh, to adjust the height, you just flip this open and, and it has it has two little icons here on top. One shows a padlock that's locked and then one that's unlocked. And you twist it to the unlocked position and then you can move this whole base up and down. Once you get it approximately where you want it, like that, and then you push this in the locked position. And before you tighten this clasp again, uh, you've got a micro adjustment here on the bottom and, it, and you can adjust it in smaller increments to get it precise, uh, which is the reason I wanted this particular trim router. Once you get it uh, in the depth that you want, just tighten the clasp and it's tight. When I first started uh, playing with it, this was a little bit loose. And when I tightened it down and locked it in place, I could still move it back and forth a little bit. So I took a wrench uh, out of my toolbox and it's got a little lock nut right here. And I just turned that lock nut just a little bit uh, to make this tighter. So when it clamps down on the base, it's got a tighter fit. So if you buy this router and you feel that this base is just a little bit loose after you lock it, uh, you can adjust it with this nut. So anyway, that's one thing I liked about it uh, was this fine tuning adjustment. Okay, it's also a variable speed. It has a soft start on it, so when you start it, it doesn't try to jerk out of your hand. On the Harbor Freight Roller, that's one thing I never liked about it. You had to really get a good grip on it before you turned it on because when you turn it on, it tries to jerk out of your hand. Feel that? Uh, this is one thing I never did like about this Harbor Freight Roller. You always had to make sure you had a good grip on it before you started do using it. You, you couldn't set it down on a piece of material like that and then start it. it was good. This one on the Harbor on the Bosch, you can set it down on a piece of material, turn it on, and it will yeah, soft start on it. It also has a variable speed on top here. This little round wheel right here adjusts the speed of the router. That's as slow as it goes. And this is as fast as it goes. So, uh, also on the Harbor Freight edge guide, you couldn't really move this in very far because of the way it was built. The edge guide, you had to use the edge guide out here like that because this this piece goes on here like that and then this one fits in here right here and it just was not a very good fit on the edge guide of the Bosch you've got this little screw right here loosen it up and this slips down inside here and also has a little tab right here that locks it square and in place, which is another problem I always had with that Harbor Freight router is uh, keeping this square. Just they had a very flimsy mounting system. This has got a tighter mounting system and I can actually put the edge closer to the bit which will come in handy when I'm cutting these narrow pieces. I can put that narrow piece right there and I won't need a second piece to get that centered. 
that actually runs right there. Uh, which I think is going to be a lot easier and a lot safer. But that's the edge guide. Also, as I was looking in the manual, uh, you can go online and you can order different bases for it. I can get a plunge base for it. I can get a tilt base for it. You can get a, a roller bearing edge, uh, kind of edge guide for it. Uh, I can't remember what the name of it is. Uh, but there are several different attachments and uh, different accessories you can buy that will fit this router. The Harbor Freight router uh, comes with the edge guide and it also had a little, one of those little uh, bearing type roller things that you can attach to it. But it was really flimsy. The bearing didn't spin very well. And again, uh, it attaches to here and it was just plastic and very flimsy and hard to uh, keep tight hard to control. So uh, I think this was a good investment. Uh, is what we're going to do now is I'm going to turn the cameras off and move them around to the uh, behind me and I've got a piece of wood and a vise and we're going to demo it and see how well it does. Okay I've got my block of wood clamped in the vise. Uh, I unplugged the router before you put the bit in. Always make sure you think about safety first. Uh, I've got it unplugged. I'm using this, I uh, can't remember what the name of it is. It is called a double flute round nose router bit. That's what I'm going to use to make these grooves in the front of my nightstands. This one I think is going to be a little bit too big. Uh, I've been was experimenting with our uh, Harbor Freight router, and I think the grooves are going to be a little bit too wide. So I've ordered this was a one inch. I've ordered a three quarter inch, uh, and I think the three quarter inch will actually be closer to the original grooves on the uh, antique dresser. But anyway, for demo purposes, we're going to use this one today. Uh, we're going to put the router in the base. It's got a little red button right here that you push in to lock the shaft and then it has a wrench that is included with the router. It's 17 millimeter and you just turn it until it locks it into place. and snug it down. Okay, and obviously, as you can see, I've got that protruding out quite a bit. Uh, I want to make that shallower, so I'm going to unclamp it from here, move it out, unlock it right here where, where it shows lock, unlock, and move it that way. Move it down to about right there. Let's put put it back in the locked position. Then I'm going to take the micro adjust and let's adjust it back in just a little bit. It's still protruding out a little bit on me. We'll put it down to about a quarter inch. This is the scale right here. I don't know if you can see that or not, but that's the scale that you can go by. Once you get it where you want it, I've probably got it out uh, less than a quarter inch, but that's okay. We'll go for a demo purpose. We'll do that. I got it locked into place and it isn't moving. Once I've got the router bit set up where I want it, I'm going to take the edge guide. Put the edge guide behind that nut, screw it down. Then I want that router bit to go right down the center of my workpiece. And, and this is just this piece of scrap that I'm using so it doesn't have to be real accurate. 
but once I get it where I want it, tighten it down, and that's my edge piece. So when I start the router, I can start it on the edge and follow it, and it should put that groove pretty close to the center. When I do the uh, when I do the actual pieces for the project, I will find center and get it more accurate. But for demo purposes, I just want to uh, show you. It's got a nice long cord on it too. That's got to be probably a probably six or better uh, foot cord. I never did find out what this little piece here is. It says do not remove. It's not connected to the cord in any way. It just slips up and down on it. So whatever that is, uh, maybe if somebody out there knows what it is, you can uh, give me a comment on my video. Tell me what that is. <laughs> I'll leave it on there for now. Probably one of those, like one of those tags you buy when you buy a pillow or something that says do not remove under penalty of execution. That's probably what that is. But I remove them anyway, just to be, just to, just to be, uh, <laughs> never mind, <laughs> lost my train of thought. Let's give it a shot. Make quite a bit of sawdust. It works real well. I'll take it out of the vise and show you. It worked very well right here where I started. But when I got to the end here, my edge fell off this part and it moved over just a little bit. You can see right here on the end. So is what I'll have to do when I do the main pieces. When I do these main pieces and I get close to that end, I'll have to put another piece of it right here. So when I get close to the edge, uh, the edge guide will have something to go on and it'll stay straight. But uh, the groove itself is uh, worked good. I think the groove is just a little bit wider than I want. So I'm going to wait for that three quarter inch bit to come in and then uh, we'll, we'll start building this, uh, these uh, nightstands. But anyway, I like the Bosch router. It's the Colt. Again, the model number is PR20EVSK. So one horsepower, 16 to 35,000 RPM with a soft start and it also has something called an electronic power uh, when you go into hardwood and stuff like that it's supposed to have more power to it but anyway that's my evaluation of the Bosch router I think it's going to work good for me I've already been online looking at the different uh, the plunge base you can buy for it and the tilt base and they seem to be reasonably priced I'll probably go ahead and get the tilt base because that might that might help be able to get this groove in this curve if the I have a tilt base on it. Uh, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, and we'll see you later. Bye. Good morning guys and girls. Welcome back to my channel and my garage. Uh, today we're going to do an unboxing of a Bosch uh, Colt 
one horsepower trim router. Uh, model number is PR20EVSK. The reason I bought it, uh, if any of you all have watched my channel before, you know I'm a big fan of this little Harbor Freight trim router. And I've had it for about two years and it's been a good router. The problem I have with it is this plastic piece on here. Uh, when you move it in and out, it's not very accurate. And unless you really torque down or put something in between right here, uh, I have a hard time keeping it still, especially when I'm uh, doing real fine work, which is uh, my next project is what I'm gonna be doing. Uh, I decided this router probably is not going to be adequate uh, for the type of uh, trim that I want to do. Uh, <clears throat> this isn't. This is uh, my next project, which is a set of nightstands for an antique uh, bed that my wife has. It belonged to her grandmother. Comes from the Depression era. Uh, it is the bed and the mirror and dresser, but it has no nightstands with it. So we want to copy the same style and look of the dresser uh, and make nightstands. Uh, so I started with uh, trying to figure out how I'm going to cut the grooves in the front. As you can see in the pictures, it's got a, a small groove that goes around the whole front of the uh, dresser. And it also has uh, Looks like three inch dowels 